Previously, out of nowhere, Makoto was summoned as a level 1 hero, but his abilities are way more powerful. He gathers a company of orcs, lizards, adventurers, and demon lords and decides to build a safe place for everyone. To achieve that he must evolve and finish various quests to earn money and knowledge. His latest quest takes him into the woods where he must gather very rare and valuable ambrosia flowers. On their way they are followed by a group of adventurers with bad intentions. When Makoto and Mio reach the flower field, they are encountered by a duo guarding the field who attack them at once. While running from Eris and Aqua, Makoto and Tamo coordinate their moves, making the three adventurers enter the demi plane. After they are out of the picture, Makoto and Mio fight back against their pursuers, easily overpowering them. Makoto explains to them that they only wanted to talk and trade with them, and not steal their precious flowers. The girls decide to lead him and Mio to their village, revealing that they are forest ogres. Makoto meets up with a representative of the ogre elders, called Nilgestori. After he explains the desire to trade with them, the elders retreat to deliberate. One of the ogres present at Dono seems very distrustful towards him. Aqua and Eris introduce Makoto to their master, Mondo, who is the strongest ogre in the village. Mio quickly separates Mondo from Makoto as he was hobbing him too much for himself. Makoto sends Mio to spy for him, trying to learn more about Mondo and Adono. While snooping around, Mio learns that Mondo is possessed while Adono is dealing with the demons behind everyone's back. Later that day, Makoto is enjoying a feast with the ogres, when suddenly the creature possessing Mondo makes its appearance. It attacks Adono and drains his life force in order to sustain a physical body, revealing itself to be a lick. The lick explains how Mondo will be fine, but Adono had to die because he was making deals with some troublesome individuals. Afterwards, the lick directs his focus towards Makoto, wanting to learn more about him by absorbing his life force. Makoto is more than capable of completely nullifying the lich's magic, sending him to the demiplane after making sure he can no longer fight. The ogres are left in shock from everything that just transpired, becoming suspicious of Makoto. Otamo makes her appearance, revealing that she has a history with Nilja's story in the forest ogres, as she was the one who set up the barrier around their village in the past. Tamo explains that she now serves Makoto, which makes the ogres view him in a different light. Returning to the demiplane to interrogate the Lick, Makoto, Tamo, and Mio learn that he is trying to find a way to become a Grant, meaning a superior human who is capable of traveling between worlds. But Tamo corrects him, explaining that anyone could travel between worlds if they found a rift, and those that managed to remain in other worlds were given that name. She continues to explain that traveling between worlds through such rifts is still possible but the chance of survival is less than 10%. The Lick feels crushed from that revelation, so Tamo suggests he should form a pact with Makoto, as he could teach Makoto a lot more about magic than Emma. The Lick is far inferior to Makoto, so he wonders if he can even be of use to him, but Makoto gladly accepts him. And so, the Lick transforms into a humanoid form as a result of the pact. At that moment, a loud explosion happens in the distance, and Tamo suddenly collapses, suffering a nasty injury. Leaving Mio to tend to Tamo, Makoto heads out to investigate the explosion, bringing the Lick with him. He finds a badly injured Alk and an Orcish child. With Lich's help, he tends to the wounds of the Alk, leaving the Lick behind to continue healing, while he rushes onwards to the ground zero of the explosion. Arriving there, Makoto finds the area covered in his own mana. He notices a still open mist gate leading out of the demi plane, so he follows through. But as he is trying to get through it, memories from the person he is chasing flow into his mind. Those are the memories of the prostitute adventurer he met the other day. From them, he learns that she was trying to use him for her personal gain from the start. During the night, she and her two companions snuck out of the illusory city, stealing dangerous items and weapons from their storage. While they were trying to get away with them, they got found out. As things were heating up, one of the items that was there for disposal, a ring that Makoto uses to absorb his mana, got tossed around, causing the vast amount of energy within it to explode. Witnessing that, Makoto is taken over by his anger towards the scheming woman. Following through the gate after her, he catches her. Without showing any mercy, he overpowers her, killing her on the spot. The reality of everything that happened catches up to him soon thereafter, making him break down in tears. Returning back to the demiplane, Makoto finds that Tamo has recovered from her injury. He asks her why he could see the adventurer's memories as that is her ability. She explains that he is able to use any of his servants' abilities once a strong enough bond of trust is formed between them, but it could have also been just an extreme circumstance that pushed the ability to be available to him. Makoto is also grateful to the Lick for his help with the healing, giving him the name Shiki. 
Afterwards, Makoto holds a funeral for Tomo's fragment and the orc who perished in the incident. He apologizes for his mistake as he did not realize the nature of humans in this world. In order to avoid such situations in the future, he decides to change the layout of the illusory city, completely walling it off from the places where demi-humans live and setting up guard patrols. Deciding he has to learn more about the state of this world and the races living in it, as well as the goddess who only favors the humans, Makoto sets out to the neutral city, Rotsgard. He decides to take Shiki with him, while leading Mio and Tamo to take care of things in the demiplane. After giving them farewell gifts, he sets out with Shiki to the teleportation circle used by travelers in order to reach Rotsgard more quickly. Unfortunately, by stepping on the teleportation circle, Makoto is noticed by the goddess who teleports him to an unknown location. There he is instantly assaulted by a boy and a woman who cuts off two of his fingers with her surprise attack. A pair of attackers seem to believe that Makoto is a demi-human serving the goddess telling him that they are his enemies because they chose to side with the demons. Using his ability, Makoto realizes that he has found himself on a battlefield between humans and demons. The fighting continues and Makoto is trying to create an opening for him to retreat, but the pair is very powerful, giving him no room to breathe. Seeing that he is a strong opponent, the attackers decide to seal away the blessing of the goddess from him. While doing so, they introduce themselves. The woman is Sophia, the famous dragon slayer, and the boy is called Lancer, formerly known as the dragon Mitsurugi. They are both shocked when they realize that sealing away the blessing did absolutely nothing to weaken Makoto, making them wonder if the goddess did not curse him instead. In order to win against them, Makoto removes the rings absorbing his mana, releasing his full potential. Drawing a new weapon that the dwarves made specifically for him, he starts to fight them at full power. Sophia and Lancer are taken aback by the amount of raw power he possesses, being barely able to defend against him. Thinking how he is not proficient at close quarter combat, Sophia charges him, but Makoto simply cuts through her massive sword with his new weapon. Seeing no other options, Sophia grabs Makoto and teleports him far above the clouds, making him drop down into countless of floating blade shards before teleporting herself back to safety. Makoto uses his magic to blast away the blade shards before infusing all of his mana into a powerful water-based magic arrow. In order to boost its strength even further, he combines it with the rings that were absorbing his mana. This turns it into a devastating attack that completely obliterates the entire battlefield underneath him. While free-falling, Makoto is saved by a mist gate opening underneath him, taking him back into the demi-plane. Sophia and Lancer survive the attack, but not without consequences. Sophia is completely beat up with her armor being destroyed, while Lancer lost a leg in the explosion. Since they can no longer sense him, the two of them think that Makoto has to be dead after using magic like that. Makoto wakes up all healed up in the demi-plane where he explains what happened to him to Tamo, Mio, and Shiki. They reason that the goddess did this to force Makoto to fight the demons, as he would be mistaken as a part of the human army. Makoto is bothered by the fact that he cannot utilize a lot of his mana at once, which hinders his capabilities in combat. Shiki reassures him that when he learns more control over his magic, he will be able to overcome that hurdle. Tamo and Mio want to join in next time when he leaves, but Makoto refuses, saying how the two of them are his trump cards, and he wants to keep them hidden from the goddess. So he will call them only when the time is right. Tamo introduces a new fragment of hers that she created to Makoto, this time using one of Makoto's charged up rings as her core in order to prevent the same thing from happening again. Makoto was happy to see the little version of Tamo, giving her the name Kamo. Tamo took it upon herself to train the forest ogres and bring them into the demi plane. The Illusory City project is coming along nicely, with Alex leading the humans who are brought in through the mist gates while pretending to be humans like they are. The shop that Makoto opened up inside is also prospering thanks to everyone's hard work. They are able to sway even those opposed to demi humans to give them a shot. Makoto recollects everything that happened recently thinking how he did not notice the other two heroes who were present on the battlefield since he was preoccupied with Sophia and Lancer. Swearing that he will do better in the future, he steals himself for things that are yet to come. Hey, thank you for staying all the way till the end. If you enjoyed the video, give it a like. It takes only a second, but it means everything to us. Have a great day and see you in the next video.